allowed to share the screen? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's get it started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Um, <clears throat> our general lecture is about to begin. Thank you very much for getting yourself prepared. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And good morning, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya. Salam Kebajikan, Shalom. His Excellency, the Head of Department of English Education, Dr. Samtidar, and the Secretary of the Department, Dr. Lasundra, uh, respectable, the Head of English Department, language program Dr. Khairil Anwar Korompot and also respectable the uh, keynote speaker Mr. Aldian Shah the honorable all professors and lecturers of English department and all participants of this general lecture Alhamdulillah now today we are um, we're having this event conducted by English department uh, which is a general lecture. I am Muhammad Ifta Fauzan, the moderator of today's event. I'm very pleased to see you here and welcome all of you to this general lecture. Before we uh, begin, we are going to listen to our national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Need your attention right now. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Um, Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Before the keynote speaker today, um, there is a, a welcome speech by the head of English department, Dr. Samsidar. Time is yours. Thank you, sir. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. And my honorable professors, uh, distinguished lecturers of English department, distinguished guests, my 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 lovely students of English department who joined this morning and I would like also to congratulate for the committee of this um, this online seminar that will be the, the head of English education's study program Dr. Karambot to conduct this this is excellent culture of of, of academic culture of English in our 
department, I would like to say salute for this. I would like to support these continuously sustainably. That will be great uh, to start this semester with this uh, great atmosphere. And then I would like also to, um, to, to congrats all my 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 pal my my fellow my fellow of uh, English department um, uh, leader in English department that this is succeed with your uh, great help. Now, especially for the for the speaker. I didn't know that this speaker is our one of our alumni. I think this is one of the the one of the successful alumni that can can bring us so bring a little bit uh, a clearer about how is called to be professional in English teaching professions or career. This is a great honor for for Aldi Mas Aldi to come back to see their own lectures coming back home. So this is a great honor for us from English department or English education, especially that this speaker is one of the alumni, yeah, ba, ba Hayril. Yeah. I don't know whether I already once thought him or I don't know whether, but his face is not familiar to me. I don't know, maybe he's already reformed or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> But once again, I would like to welcome our alumni Aldi, Aldiansha, to, to be one of the a keynote speaker of how, how English teaching to be as a professional career. That I would like to listen from. How is professional means according to, uh, to, to the sojourner, someone who have done the research outside the, of the country and have a look and listen directly how actually uh, English teaching in overseas and how will be implemented through his career. That will be worth listening for, for our students, for our lecturers, for our departments. How can this can, can spark plugs so uh, to inspire the students how to be English professional educator. Well, there's nothing I, I would like to say to, to shorten this. Uh, once again, congratulations, welcome home, welcome back, and do the best to, to brighten our professional means in, in English teaching career. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy the, the seminar. Hopefully, everything is noted down. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much, Pak Kajur. Thank you for your support and then the support of the English department. Um, now we will have our uh, head of English language program, uh, the one and only <laughs> Dr. Khaila <laughs> Kerompo. Time is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Pak uh, Muhammad Mustafa Fauzan. Um, I would like to say hello to Dr. Sam Kider, our, our uh, head of the, I mean, the head of the English department at the SONM, Dr. Lasunra, the secretary of uh, the English department, and all my colleagues, uh, the uh, faculty members of the English department, uh, as well as uh, um, those in the English language education study program. I would like to say hello to our students, yeah, uh, from yeah. all the classes, classes of 2021, 20, 20, 2020, 2019, and uh, the other classes. Um, and also Mr. Aldian Shah, yeah. Yeah. Um, the distinguished uh, guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning everyone. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning sir. Okay, I would like to welcome everyone to the uh, fourth session of the faculty yeah. development program of the English language education study program here in the English department yeah. at UNM. Uh, this uh, follows the success of the previous sessions. Uh, particularly the uh, last one last month uh, featuring 
uh, Dr. Uh, Carmila Mpuginta dan uh, uh, Ananda Muhammad ya. Yeah. And very, we are pr- very proud to present uh, this fourth edition this month. Uh, and, and this will be followed by uh, the forthcoming sessions uh, next month and the next month and so on and so on. And Hello. we hope that uh, this program can uh, can uh, be done regularly uh, every month. Yeah. In this edition, in this particular edition, uh, the session is in the form Hello. of a studium general or public lecture or general Hello. lecture uh, conducted prior to the uh, commencement of the even semester or semester genap of the 2021-2022 academic year, which will officially start next Monday, uh, the 7th of February, 2022. So uh, this is why the, season, uh, the session this morning is referred to as Online Pre-Semester Studium General. Yeah, it's a very fancy name. Uh, and uh, it is featuring one of our alumni, yeah, one of, our, one of the best alumni we ever had and that is Mr. Aldiansyah. So on this occasion I would like to thank Mr. Aldiansyah SSMA TESOL Applied Linguistics for accepting our invitation to speak in this event. Uh, the title of his talk this morning, Being and Becoming an ELT Professional, uh, means that our students in particular will learn a lot from him who is, uh, I think, a highly experienced and capable practitioner in the field. And I hope that our students may one day uh, be able to follow in his footsteps as an ELT professional. So thank you, uh, Aldi, for your time and welcome home to the English department of FBSONM. In closing, I would like to thank all the faculty members for their support, Dr. Santider for his encouragement, uh, and Mr. Muhammad Mr. Fauzan for his dedication that have made uh, it possible for this event to happen. I wish Mr. Aldi all the best for his presentation. And also, uh, I'd like to wish everyone a fruitful, fruitful opportunity for learning from him and talking with him. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you very much. Uh, Hi, Real. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention right now? Uh, this is a, an important session, a very important session, the, the core of the session, the core of the event. Um, <clears throat> before we have the uh, keynote speaker today, um, I'd like to introduce him uh, in a sh- very short, very brief introduction. Um, he is uh, Mr. Aldian uh, his name is Mr. Aldiansha, uh, one of the successful ELT professionals and an awardee of Fulbright Scholarship. He has received his bachelor's degree in English, lang- English educational program uh, at Universitas Negeri Makassar, a uh, Master of Arts in TESOL and Applied Linguistics uh, at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, a uh, Fulbright Scholar also, MA, um, Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs and uh, talking about his professional career um, he was the a senior teacher uh, uh, program development uh, Britain International English School the academic coordinator of the same English course Britain English Education and also the master teacher uh, currently he worked as the uh, master teacher at English Academy by Ruang Guru. So he's a very well experienced um, ELT professional. Um, <clears throat> well, um, now we are going to listen to the uh, general lecture of Mr. Uh, Aldiansha uh, talking about the world in your hands being and becoming an ELT professional. Uh, okay, Mr. Adiansha, time is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Fausan, for the introduction. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning to everyone. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Uh, 
yeah, so before I start, I'd like to uh, express my, 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 my appreciation for Pak Samtidar, Pak, uh, Pak Ling, yeah, and all of my, I believe maybe there are some lecturers joining as well who I have learned from. So thank you very much. And I was very excited when Pak Ling sent the invitation whether I would be available to deliver or to, to join this and share in this uh, forum. I was very excited because I said, this, is, this has been one of my, 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 my dreams, you know, being able to give back to the university that helped me grow. And yeah, uh, your university study, guys, education is going to mean a lot. So make sure you get the most out of it and, you know, use it, use it uh, optimum, optimally. Yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah, um, what are we gonna share about today? So uh, the title is uh, also something that Pa Ling uh, helped me come up with. Okay, and so we came up with uh, the world in your hands, being and becoming an ELT professional. And I think this title really captures the essence, the, the essence that I also would love to share to, to everyone. And uh, to make sure that the information is conveyed well, uh, I'm going to combine, yeah. Jadi saya akan uh, combine English, Indonesian. Jadi uh, bisa memastikan informasinya ter tersampaikan ke teman-teman ya, ke adik-adik. And also, if you uh, have any questions, you can post it in the chat box. So later, when we get to the Q and A, kita bisa sharing uh, mengenai pertanyaan tersebut. Okay, so uh, being and becoming an ELT professional. I hope I can read the text clearly, guys, because yeah, my eyes are not you know are not what they used to be or how they used to be. I need glasses, but because of the Polaroid. I can't really read well. And the Polaroid activates when you are outside, right? And yes, I'm currently outside. I'm currently in Slayer having my vacation during a work day. Okay. Wow. During a work day. Yeah. So I wish you can see the, the view right now, what I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at to the ocean. It's beautiful. It's perfect. And in the past, I never imagined that I could work in this kind of setting. Okay. Dan inilah uh, gambaran bagaimana sekarang opportunity sebagai uh, ELT profesional itu sudah sangat-sangat apa ya sudah sangat-sangat beda dengan dulu gitu. Dulu kita pikirnya jadi guru bahasa Inggris itu di kelas gitu kan, uh, you know within the walls of the classroom and nothing like this uh, could come in mind. But sekarang kita sudah we are in the new normal, call it, right? And a lot of things are possible nowadays, especially in the career of ELT professional. So, and that's what I would uh, like to share, okay, in this uh, session today. Okay, and uh, there are also some images there on the slides that I intentionally put to show you guys some manifestations, yeah, of the opportunities you could get in the field. Jadi kalau mungkin teman-teman sempat dengar anak IT waka, waka, potensi karirnya itu luar biasa umpamanya anak komputer gitu jangan berkecil hati karena di jurusan kita juga itu in English education there are lots of opportunities okay alright so uh, and to help uh, you to get to that uh, same you know uh, vision uh, these are the uh, items in the agenda that we will uh, focus on for the sharing. Pertama mengenai uh, apa sebenarnya definisi dari English language teaching professional. So what does such a profession mean, yeah? Is it only teaching or are are there more, you know, to it? And then uh, career opportunities as an ELT professional in these modern days. Seperti yang saya ucapkan tadi, sekarang kita tidak hanya lagi semata-mata jadi guru bahasa Inggris ya. There are lots of other opportunities, and I will uh, share some of these uh, potential opportunities for you. 
what and how to prepare to become a successful uh, ELT professional. Jadi based on especially based on my experience ya. Yeah. Uh, berdasarkan pengalaman saya apa yang penting uh, dan bagaimana cara untuk mempersiapkannya supaya adik-adik bisa uh, karirnya di uh, sebagai ELT profesional itu bisa uh, bisa bagus ya. Yeah. And finally some job seeking tips and tricks. Uh, meskipun mungkin adik-adik masih di semester awal nih ya. Tadi Pak saya uh, I heard Pak Ling said that some of you are a junior or even a freshman. Tapi satu hal yang saya sadari ya in hindsight itu persiapan kita untuk masuk dunia kerja itu harus dimulai sedini mungkin. Kalau bisa dari mulai dari semester 1 join di uh, universitas. Jadi lucky you that your uh, faculty is providing this kind of platform. Otherwise, it is very unlikely that I, I would meet all of you in a different forum and share what uh, you need to prepare in based on my experience. All right. And I hope that this sharing will be beneficial for you guys. Okay. All right. So starting with the first uh, topic about what is a successful ELT professional. Now, apa definisi kita mengenai ELT profesional yang sukses itu seperti apa itu tentu saja berbeda-beda. Ada mungkin yang berpikir ELT profesional itu yang sukses ya hanya dosen saja umpamanya kan. Atau yang hanya bisa ngajar di luar negeri aja gitu kan. Jadi saya tertarik ingin mengetahui what your thoughts are about what is actually a successful ELT professional sehingga saya bisa bayangkan dan bisa mencoba relate dengan perspektif adik-adik teman-teman ya. Nah, uh, to share your thoughts, I'd like you to click this link. Hold on, I will post it in the chat box. Uh, simply click the link to follow it. Nah, nanti kalau udah klik linknya, itu adik-adik akan uh, land on this page. Hold on, and I'd like you to write down what or how you define a successful ELT professional. So go ahead. I'll give you guys three to five, uh, three minutes, three minutes, because we, we, we don't have that much, of, uh, that much uh, of time to spare for this. So go ahead. Three minutes, click the link, and then share your thoughts. OK. All right, so I've got one definition already. Successful English teacher or professional is someone who who is tepat waktu, yeah. Okay, make good money. I like that. <laughs> I like that perspective. <laughs> okay, how about the others? Mereka yang bisa mendidik mendedikasikan menjadi awanas. Ah, masya Allah. Very good, excellent. I like that. A, a noble perspective as well. On time, has many successful students. Yep, I would definitely agree with that. Being able to create your own successful students is uh, one indicator for sure. Yang bisa membuat siswanya mengerti tentang apa ini. Okay, good. Has huge impact on English education. Okay, how about the others? Go ahead. We still have two minutes for this. Bisa bekerja sambil menikmati hidup. Okay. All right. Uh, teach us how to face the difficulty and being the one always. Excellent. Okay, making your knowledge uh, useful and beneficial to your society. Absolutely. Discipline. Okay. Being diligent in teaching. Loved by the students. All right. Yes, that's one of the uh, implications of a good teacher. Okay, good. Okay, teaching with heart. I like that. Okay, one minute left. Go ahead and share your thoughts about a successful ELT professional. Humorous and professional. Okay. A teacher who could encourage the students and make them in love with their learning. Yeah, so yeah, that's a great definition there. Okay. All 
All right, excellent. Thank you for sharing, everyone. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm getting a better picture of what you, what, what, what's in your mind uh, about a successful ELT professional. Thank you. Excellent. All right. So uh, before we go on to the next slide, yes. Um, you are free to define your own definition, of course, uh, of what a successful ELT professional is. And uh, the idea, what, what important is how you actualize or how you realize that definition, how you, uh, you know, uh, do what you need to do in order you can be that uh, figure yeah, of a uh, successful ELT professional. And yes, based on your uh, definitions on the, uh, uh, on the website just now, I think they are all very possible. They're all very, very possible if you are committed to that. Okay, excellent. All right, now let's move on to what I think are the options as an ELT professional nowadays and what are the opportunities. Okay, uh, jadi menjadi seorang profesional di bidang ELT itu tidak semerta-merta berarti kita akan menjadi guru saja. In fact, the ELT industry or the ESL or EFL nowadays, ya, yeah, atau industri uh, pembelajaran bahasa Inggris sebagai bahasa kedua atau ketiga, uh, itu tidak hanya mem meminta kita untuk jadi guru tok untuk mengajar tok ada banyak roles roles yang yang mengikut oke okay? uh, selain daripada mengajar saja gitu contohnya di di beberapa sekolah yang saya pernah masuki yang saya pernah join se selain mengajar saya diharapkan untuk bisa menjadi public relation juga dengan orang tua siswa umpamanya menjadi motivator juga buat siswa siswa yang bermasalah umpama atau yang kehilangan motivasi menjadi uh, MC juga gitu kan kalau ada acara-acara uh, apa public outreach gitu ya sekolah gitu promosi gitu nah, itu kita di, diharapkan untuk bisa uh, men, me, me, menjadi role role tersebut jadi tidak hanya kita tidak bisa bilang I'm, I'm a teacher don't ask me to do that no trust me you will not be successful in the industry nowadays jadi teman-teman mesti siap-siap untuk bisa adaptable ya. uh, bisa menjadi role-role yang berbeda gitu. uh, jadi uh, salah satu beber, tapi beberapa role-role yang secara formal tertera di kontrak itu bisa seperti ini jadi ada teacher tentu saja teaching assistant juga sudah semakin uh, apa ya uh, common ya seperti di English Academy sekarang uh, by ruang guru itu di tiap kelas ada satu teacher ada satu teaching assistant nah Demand untuk teaching assistant ini tentu saja akan terus naik ya, karena kalau saya lihat trennya itu mengarah ke situ, oke? Okay. Karena dibutuhkannya betul-betul service dan delivery yang 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 baik, jadi dibutuhkan teacher dan teaching assistant juga untuk memastikan pembelajaran siswa itu makin efektif. Uh, student advisor uh, yang yang biasa uh, memang tugasnya atau tanggung jawabnya itu uh, memberikan uh, apa uh, uh, advice ya ke students di luar kelas umpamanya ya uh, mengenai entah itu mereka akan belajar ke luar negeri atau mereka ada tugas-tugas di sekolah atau something like that itu kadang role ini juga sering kita dapatkan di sekolah-sekolah uh, bahasa Inggris di uh, non negeri ya non formal sekarang ini teacher trainer nah tentu saja ya dibutuhkan trainer untuk melatih guru-guru baru di sekolah-sekolah meskipun rata-rata guru-guru baru ini sudah lulusan S1 atau bahkan S2 rata-rata sekolah-sekolah itu di luar mereka memang menyediakan training untuk guru-guru baru nah teacher trainer inilah yang ber sebagai person in charge di departemen tersebut, nah, demandnya juga makin tinggi. Education consultant buat ya, buat uh, biasanya uh, join di marketing untuk mencari siswa. Academic manager yang mengontrol segala uh, 
academic affairs ya di uh, di sebuah sekolah director of studies uh, hampir mirip dengan academic manager tapi lebih biasa posisi posisinya lebih tinggi kadang di, di satu sekolah ada beberapa academic manager yang diatasi oleh uh, direct director of studies prinsipal kalau di uh, format sekolah uh, umum ya yang formal gitu kayak SD SMP SMA pakai prinsipal ah university professor tentu saja Uh, for your information, this is still my one of my uh, goals, <laughs> my life goals, to be a university professor. Okay, so those are examples of uh, the career that you can uh, uh, get uh, in the field. Okay, jadi jangan hanya fokus ke jadi guru aja. Gitu. Ada banyak opportunities lain. Dan ini di uh, konteks formal ya, banyak yang non formal seperti freelance guru. Uh, ngajar private jadi tour guide itu kan butuh bahasa Inggris dan kemampuan menjelaskan ya yang tentu saja kita pelajari di English Education. Nah, uh, opportunities di bidang kita itu seperti apa? Ini ada beberapa yang saya research kemarin, saya search search ya di uh, internet di research gate dikatakan kalau EFL training market would grow much larger much faster. And it has been like that since the past decades. Okay. Apa, industri pembelajaran bahasa Inggris itu tidak pernah turun, selalu naik karena globalisasi. Okay. Karena globalisasi. Dan kita bisa lihat globalisasi seperti apa dari COVID sendiri. Bayangkan sebuah virus yang sangat kecil berada di satu bagian di dunia bisa tersebar ke seluruh dunia. Itu bukti dari apa? Globalisasi. Nah, tentu saja. Di globalisasi komunikasi sangat penting dan bahasa Inggris kebetulan bahasa utama bahasa ini ya yang digunakan jadi potensinya dan opportunitynya sangat sangat besar uh, another uh, what is it reports here we have with the projected two billion uh, ESL students worldwide by 2020 jadi ini dua tahun yang lalu itu udah dua billion students apalagi sekarang ya itu tentu saja akan memberikan peluang lebih banyak buat kita profesional di bidang ELT. Okay. So in a nutshell jangan takut mengenai running out of job. Menjadi pengangguran sarjana bahasa Inggris yang pengangguran itu kalau menurut saya ya ada yang salah dengan orangnya. <laughs> Bukan dengan lapangan kerjanya karena there are so many opportunities in our field. Oke, okay. nah untuk memberikan gambaran lebih konkret lagi mengenai opportunitynya, saya mau share mengenai my career journey ya. Jadi teman-teman bisa bayangkan opportunitynya secara real ya. Oke, okay. jadi saya join. Uh, bahasa Inggris uh, FBS UNEM itu di 2004. Kemudian sebelum baru di semester uh, berapa tuh? Semester 4 ya. Baru di semester 4 aja masih kuliah itu udah ada opportunity. Udah ada uh, tawaran untuk uh, menjadi tutor par paru waktu tapi ya karena kita kan masih kuliah di bimbel-bimbel dan banyak tuh ya bimbel-bimbel. Nah, itu udah udah dapat alhamdulillah waktu itu. Oke. Okay. Modal bahasa Inggris toh Okay, modal bahasa Kristo. Sarjana belum belum ada, <laughs> belum ada ini apa uh, ijazah. Ya. Tapi udah bisa, udah bisa cari makan. Okay. Kemudian 2008 uh, itu Brit, uh, Britain masuk ke kampus mencari guru uh, Britain English Education ya. I think one of the biggest schools in Eastern Indonesia. Itu uh, saya ingat sekali akademik manajernya masuk ke kampus ke ke Parantambung mencari guru. Nah itu mereka adakan tes, saya ikut. Alhamdulillah saya salah satu yang uh, ini nilainya bagus. Waktu itu yang dipakai untuk tes itu TOEFL. Jadi mereka cari yang TOEFLnya tinggi, itu yang kemudian di, dilanjutkan untuk diseleksi. Gitu. And I'm, I was one of them and I got it. Oke. Okay. Modal bahasa Inggris. Oke. Okay. Ah, and then uh, jadi saya join di situ masih dalam status apa ya probation karena masih masih anak kuliah belum ada ijazah belum lulus nah, tapi saya udah mulai probation gajinya tidak begitu banyak 
tapi saya pikir pengalaman. I can get experience while I'm finishing my study. Dan pengalaman itu sangat-sangat apa ya? sangat-sangat uh, penting di dunia di dunia uh, yeah, ELT. Oke. Okay. They really appreciate experience. Okay, so make sure kalau teman-teman ada kesempatan untuk dapat pengalaman, ambil, take it. Oke, okay. whether it's good or not itu nomor kedua. Oke. Okay. Pokoknya diambil aja dulu and then you do your best. Okay, yeah. and then uh, in 2019 I was being promoted to junior teacher dari probation di Britain juga di 2009 juga saya uh, mulai private tutoring karena kebetulan siswa saya di kelas Britain itu suka ya alhamdulillah nah mereka tawarkan uh, bisa nggak private gitu nah, itu juga satu opportunitas uh, opportunity ya buat teman-teman. Kemudian 2011 saya menyelesaikan S1 saya itu uh, udah hampir di DO ya ke keasikan kerja <laughs> keenakan kerja jadi hampir lupa kuliah. Tapi alhamdulillah waktu itu saya ingat Pak Pak Abdullah ada ya Pak Abdullah kalau nggak salah waktu itu yang bantu juga jadi alhamdulillah bisa kelar S1 nya 2012 tetap di Britain. Being promoted to middle teacher, kemudian 2014 menjadi program manager, di mana itu saya simpelnya menjadi instructional designer. Ah ini juga saya lupa kasih includekan di salah satu career opportunity, model role ya di dunia ELT industry. Sebagai instructional designer, teman-teman itu membuat bahan ajar yang digunakan oleh guru-guru lain. Gitu, ketika mengajar. Nah itu juga sekarang sangat banyak opportunities di sini. Di English Academy aja kemarin mereka banyak nyari instructional designer yang buat-buat PowerPoint, buat ngajar gitu kan. Ada khusus uh, role untuk itu. Uh, kemudian passing the test ya ini ada opportunity juga kemarin waktu 2014 menjadi speaking examiner buat Cambridge melalui Britain juga sih. Jadi saya ambil, saya lolos. Nah, ini kalau ada opportunity untuk mendapatkan sesuatu yang bersifat internasional, take it. Itu akan betul-betul membuat teman-teman itu CV-nya stand out. Oke, okay, kalau ada yang bersifat international standard seperti ini. Nah, in fact, kayaknya ini yang di CV saya yang membantu sekali waktu saya mendaftar beasiswa. Karena Fulbright melihat saya ada apa ya? Ada ada uh, internationally minded gitu ya istilahnya ya. Untuk melihat lebih ke internasional gitu. Ah, itu sangat membantu. Kemudian jadi saya mendaftar beasiswa, alhamdulillah lolos Fulbright Australian saya nggak lolos, unfortunately karena Australian itu memang ada fokus-fokus ininya ya bidang yang mereka prioritaskan. Kebetulan waktu itu bahasa Inggris bukan salah satu yang diprioritaskan. Tapi Fulbright alhamdulillah lolos, jadi saya mulai belajar tahun depannya itu itu off mengajar fokus ke belajar dua tahun. Alhamdulillah lulus dengan baik, IPK 4,0, karena betul-betul saya pikir ini kesempatan, harus betul-betul saya gunakan dengan sebaik-baiknya. Join kembali ke Britain, kemudian dipromosikan ke posisi senior teacher dan teacher trainer. Tahun ke depannya menjadi akademik koordinator, nah tahun berikutnya ini menjadi sangat-sangat menantang ya buat bidang kita terutama di mana pandemi dan lockdown berjalan sehingga kelas-kelas bahasa Inggris itu bahasa Inggris itu banyak yang drop. Banyak sekolah-sekolah bahasa Inggris yang tutup. Karena kita belum apa ya, kita belum terbiasa dan publik itu masyarakat belum terbiasa dengan belajar online. Oke, pikirnya yang cuma, yang belajar itu hanya offline, yang efektif itu hanya offline. Padahal tidak ya. Online juga bisa efektif ketika kualitasnya dijaga. Nah, tahun 2020 karena pandemi saya terpaksa harus mencari opsi-opsi tambahan ya untuk 
ya yeah, you know financially speaking ya yeah. jadi saya join join online English school ada banyak there are many English schools ada kampung Inggris ada Lister ada English Academy ada I I I, I can uh, name all of them because there are so many itulah opportunity di bidang ELT meskipun offline nggak bisa online tetap ada oke okay. jadi saya join salah satunya dan uh, kebetulan waktu saya ngajar di sebagai freelance itu saya dapat waktu itu kelas private suami dari uh, manager English Academy suaminya gitu jadi mungkin waktu saya ngajar si manajernya lihat terus pikirnya bagus mereka lah kemudian langsung kontak saya melalui LinkedIn ya tahu kan sosial media LinkedIn nah ditawarkanlah menjadi uh, master teacher di ruang guru dan sekarang I'm here okay with a lot of facilities from ruang guru good pay and yeah opportunities to teach students from all around Indonesia jadi itu salah satu gambaran what you are in for in this industry guys jadi fight for it okay fight for it so how to fight for it okay bagaimana cara teman-teman bisa mencapai ke target tersebut in my experience ada dua aspek kunci untuk teman-teman bisa sukses di bidang ELT yang pertama English proficiency kemahiran berbahasa Inggris itu nomor satu okay your English proficiency okay uh, I'll show you why it's very important and what to do to, to prepare that secondly is your pedagogical knowledge and skill kemampuan mengajar all right so let's start with English proficiency Teman-teman, sekarang kita saingannya itu bukan cuma lokal teacher. Kita sekarang sudah bersaing dengan international teachers, dengan bule, native. Di English Academy, tempat saya mengajar, bisa dibilang 40% gurunya itu bule. Yang lokal itu hanya 60%. Nah, standar, tentu saja standar dari sekolah itu kan mengharapkan kita, lokal teachers, bisa ber, uh, berbaur atau ke mengimbangi yang international teacher. Nah, bagaimana cara mengimbangi international teacher is to really really improve your English. Get good. Okay? Get good in, uh, with your English. Nah, cara untuk bahasa Inggrisnya bisa you know uh, uh, apa? exemplary atau excellent. Pertama, kalian kan ini udah belajar di Fakultas Bahasa Inggris ya. Pastikan teman-teman itu belajar betul di kelasnya. Oke, okay, terutama yang masih semester awal. Ada bahasa Inggris 1 2 3 kan. Seterusnya itu jangan bolos, oke. Okay? <laughs> Don't skip it. Study it well. Karena dosen-dosennya adik-adik itu udah melanglang buana, udah mau British English, American English, mau apa? Any kinds of English itu sudah master betul. Makanya belajarlah. Oke, okay, jangan sia-siakan. Kemudian kalau ada uh, English clubs di kampus saya dulu ingat ada ICC. Nah, saya join di kampus ICC. Nah, itu sangat membantu juga untuk kita latihan di luar kelas. Oke, okay, dan sekarang ada banyak juga yang online. Jadi sangat membantu juga. Kemudian relate your hobby to your English learning. Uh, coba kaitkan hobinya teman-teman dengan bahasa Inggris, pembelajaran bahasa Inggris. Umpamanya kalau teman-teman suka main game, maka ganti gamenya dari yang namanya Mobile Legend ya. Mobile Legend kan enggak ada komunikasi itu ya. Kecuali kalau main dengan bule atau teman dari luar negeri. Nah, ganti gamenya dengan yang berbahasa Inggris gitu. Sehingga secara tidak langsung teman-teman itu have fun tapi juga me meningkatkan bahasa Inggrisnya. Oke, okay? itu berdasarkan pengalaman saya yang paling efektif. Cari hobi, oh ya, kaitkan hobinya dengan bahasa Inggris atau cari hobi yang bisa ganti hobinya dengan yang bisa membantu meningkatkan bahasa Inggris teman-teman. Contohnya teman-teman ya, saya itu nggak suka baca buku. I don't like reading books, and I think a lot of you are on the same boat, right? 
Tapi karena saya pikir bahasa Inggris penting banget buat saya dan reading salah satu cara belajar bahasa Inggris yang paling cepat dan paling efektif, saya jadinya suka baca buku. Oke. Okay. Tapi ya bukunya yang yang menarik-menarik juga buat saya, enggak enggak yang semua juga gitu kan. Oke. Okay. So that's an example of the sacrifices you need to make. Oke. Okay. Kadang memang kita harus go the extra mile ya to get what we need. And then look for opportunities to to teach English on the side. Cari kesempatan untuk mengajar bahasa Inggris karena teman-teman cara belajar yang paling efektif adalah mengajar. Oke. Okay. Saya sebelum sebelum mengajar di Britain, saya itu enggak hafal tenses, enggak hafal modal verbs, grammar rules. I have no idea what they are. Saya masuk di kelas, dengar, sudah. But karena waktu itu saya harus ngajar dan saya harus menjelaskan ketika siswa saya bertanya kenapa verb satu nggak bisa sesudah to be umpamanya kan otomatis saya harus pelajari dan itu menjadi motivasi. Oke, okay. nah sama jadi cari kesempatan untuk mengajar sehingga teman-teman bisa belajar gitu kan. Oke okay, and finally study practice and use English. Uh, usahakan sering-sering digunakan. Uh, Itulah gunanya kita join English clubs karena di situ kita bisa fasilitasnya sebentuk latihan, right? Find friends, Omegle, nah, itu Omegle bagus juga. Omegle ketemu orang luar latihan bahasa Inggris. Itu Vicky Naki yang jadi brand ambassador English Academy itu bisa bah tujuh bahasa karena Omegle loh. Ketemu orang-orang dari luar negeri, gitu kan? So use that to practice. Alright. Oke, okay. nah mungkin teman-teman sekarang bertanya, oke, okay, anggaplah bahasa Inggris saya sudah berkembang. Nah, bagaimana cara saya tahu kalau bahasa Inggris saya itu sudah cukup untuk menopang saya di industri ELT untuk menjadi seorang ELT profesional? Nah, teman-teman mesti tahu standarnya. You need to know the standards. Uh, what kind of English standard or level that the schools out there are looking for? Oke, okay, karena yang pertama mereka bakal lihat itu bahasa Inggris teman-teman. Itu yang pertama yang mereka mau uh, lihat. Nah, cara me me ngecek apakah teman-teman bahasa Inggrisnya udah cukup atau belum, itu menggunakan ada yang namanya International Benchmark ya, atau CEFR, Common European Framework of Reference. Di Britain English Education sendiri untuk jadi guru baru, itu bahasa Inggris kalian mesti minimal B2 levelnya kalau di CFA. Oke. Okay. Minimal di B2. Nah, ini B2 ini ada di sekitaran kalau pernah ngambil TOEFL ITP skornya itu minimal harus 5, 543. Oke. Okay. Kalau di IBT 72, kalau di IELTS 5,5. Nah, ini kalau ini mendaftar ke Britain itu lolos untuk melanjutkan ke step selanjutnya yaitu wawancara. Ya jadi ini gambaran. Nah, kalau mau naik level menjadi guru yang di you know di level yang lebih tinggi tentu saja level bahasa Inggrisnya harus lebih tinggi yaitu C1. C1 itu kisaran 627 di TOEFL ITP, 95 di IBT dan 7 di IELTS. Oke. Okay. Dan untuk menjadi teacher trainer atau senior teachers di banyak sekolah itu, mereka mengharapkan tentu saja yang C2. C2 itu sudah level tertinggi, native like. Udah kayak bule lah bahasa Inggrisnya. Itu kalau di skor tes bahasa Inggris 114 di IBT dan 8 di IELTS. Oke, ini standar internasional yang biasa sekolah gunakan. Untuk uh, rekrutmen. Nah, uh, bisa uh, ada kalau teman-teman uh, search di Google, cari CFR descriptor itu bisa melihat apa arti dari level B2, C1, C2 itu bisa lihat di situ. Seperti apa bahasa Inggris yang diharapkan. Untuk sekarang mungkin uh, waktu terbatas, jadi saya nggak bisa uh, share lebih detail ya mengenai ini. Tapi ini bisa menjadi patokan buat teman-teman. Apakah bahasa Inggrisnya sudah siap atau enggak untuk melaju ke ELT professional world. Okay, so that's the first one, guys. You have to get good with your English. 
Nah, yang kedua, you have to be a competent teacher. And what are or what is a competent teacher actually? Ah, ini ada saya sempat searching. Uh, there is a paper that defines yeah, a competent ELT teacher. Jadi katanya ada four dimensions of teacher competence. Untuk menjadi seorang teacher yang kompeten, teman-teman itu mesti memiliki empat ini. Yang pertama, you have to have the pedagogical competence. And it is about your knowledge of how to explain a lesson. How to make sure that the lesson is conveyed, you know, gets through to your students. Kemudian itu tidak, uh, it's not the only important things. There are other three important uh, things. Yeah. Personality competence. Karakter teman-teman sebagai seorang guru. Okay. Uh, salah satunya menjadi reflektif. Ya. Kalian harus siap untuk menge apa, uh, mengakses kelemahan teman-teman dan kemudian mencari cara supaya itu uh, bisa di, uh, uh, di, diperbaiki. Gitu, di, Tingkatkan. Kemudian social competence, your ability and skill to interact with people. Terutama kalau ngajar banyak children ya, ngajar children itu sudah otomatis bakalan berinteraksi dengan parentsnya. Itu social competence sangat dibutuhkan. Uh, dan juga ketika mengajar dengan teenagers dan adults ya, social competence is important. Karena masing-masing group of students itu ada tantangan tersendiri. Uh, socially speaking, ya. Yeah. Kemudian professional competence, your ability or skills to devise and implement learning process. Jadi empat ini penting. Dan saya yakin di kurikulum atau silabus di uh, apa di mata kuliahnya adik-adik itu ini sudah tercover semua. I'm sure. Makanya pastikan ya, teman-teman. Hadiri kelasnya, belajar dengan baik. Okay, ace your subjects, ya. Yeah. Teaching uh, subjects, hadiri, jangan bolos, uh, coba dapat A, gitu kan. Kemudian stay abreast with ELT pedag pedagogy development. Sering-sering kalau ada waktu ngecek Google apa perkembangan terakhir di dunia pengajaran bahasa Inggris, oke. Okay. Be familiar with the pedagogical standards of your target school or institution. Nah, ini penting juga. Kalau teman-teman targetnya nanti selesai kuliah mau join English Academy umpamanya. Pelajari, coba Google bagaimana sistem pengajaran di English Academy. Kalau mau masuk di Britain, cari tahu sistem pengajaran di Britain itu seperti apa. Dan teman-teman, persiapkan dirinya untuk bisa mengajar mengikuti approach Uh, ini will share. Uh, saya bisa share untuk hari ini. Sekarang yang bersekolah yang itu menggunakan ini untuk good. Have you heard of ticket? Anyone? Ada ada yang udah familiar dengan ticket tidak? Oke. Okay. Hold on, let me fix my connection. Oh, apa link? Is it better? Is it back to being better? Uh, being yes. Yeah, yeah. It's clear. Check. Okay. Clear. Yes. All right. So I was asking, has any of you guys, uh, adik-adik, teman-teman yang join, TKT? Belum ya? 
Oke, okay, mungkin mata kuliahnya belum uh, menyentuh ke situ. Uh, subjeknya terawal. Nah, oleh karena itu saya mau share sedikit. Jadi TKT itu adalah standar uh, teaching ya, teaching standard yang banyak digunakan di sekolah-sekolah internasional seperti EF English First, Wall Street, uh, English Academy juga menggunakan ini dan Britain juga menggunakan ini. Jadi TKT itu adalah tes buat guru bahasa Inggris. Nah. Yang standar-standar internasional seperti ini yang teman-teman mesti persiapkan. Dan untuk something to give to you today, that's what I wanna spend a little bit of time with you guys. Saya mau share sedikit gambaran mengenai TKT, International Teaching Standards used by a lot of international schools. Oke, jadi TKT itu adalah tes bas, uh, tes buat guru bahasa Inggris. Ini modular uh, tes ya, ada beberapa modul di tesnya. Dan tiap modul itu topiknya fokusnya beda-beda. Nah, untuk kesempatan hari ini saya mau main sedikit game, oke, okay, with Kahoot dengan teman-teman untuk memperkenalkan bagaimana TKT modul 1 itu uh, how, it, how it is like. So you have a picture of what Concept to prepare. Okay, so let's do that. Also, it's an icebreaker. Uh, I will share the link in the chat box. Okay, hold on. And we'll see. Kita lihat siapa yang kira-kira bisa. Uh, who can be? at the top yeah and who can be uh, what is it who is the most familiar with this so go ahead go to kahoot.it jadi join kahoot.it ke browsernya type in kahoot.it and then insert the game here Uh, I'll, I'll wait until there are plenty of you joining and then we will start okay uh, dan meskipun teman-teman nggak kebagian kursi untuk join gamenya don't worry teman-teman masih bisa belajar dengan melalui nonton ya. okay Ardi has joined thank you let's wait for the others I'll give you guys one minute, one minute to join. Don't worry if you if you cannot join within one minute, you can still learn about TKT through uh, watching the uh, quiz being, you know, played. Okay, we have. 16, 17, 20 of you now. Let's wait uh, 30 more seconds. 30 more seconds. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Let's start. Okay, this is an example of questions in TKT Model 1. Seperti ini model pertanyaannya. So just, just guess. How many parts of speech are there? Ada berapa parts of speech ini in the English language? Are there 9, 12, 5, or 8? Okay, let's see. Okay, only 4. <laughs> only 4 out of, I don't know, 30-ish of you who answered this correctly. So. Parts of speech adalah salah satu term 
in English language teaching yang guru itu mesti betul-betul pahami. Karena ini akan digunakan ketika kita menjelaskan. Okay, so pedagogical competence. So make sure when you study in your course, you master these kinds of terms. Because you'll need it when you actually work later on or when you actually become a teacher. Okay, jadi Dean, good job. Okay, how about this one? What are chunks? Apa yang dimaksud dengan chunks? Dalam konteks pembelajaran dan pengajaran bahasa Inggris. Oke, okay, good. Most of you are correct. Oke, okay, jadi sekali lagi term-term seperti ini yang digunakan di konteks-konteks internasional. Jadi nanti kayak kalau teman-teman di training ya, itu trainernya bakalan pakai term-term seperti ini. Nah, kalau teman-teman nggak familiar with this kind of terms, it's going to slow you down by a lot. Ya. Jadi make sure you are prepared. Okay, Ninis is taking the lead now. How about this one? What would be the best example of a language function? What is an example of a language function? Okay, so yes, language function, another uh, common term in ELT. Jadi memang TKT modul 1 itu ngecek bagaimana uh, seberapa familiar teman-teman dengan terms-terms atau konsep-konsep yang digunakan di ELT. Okay, let's continue with the other uh, six questions. How many language skills are there? We have 33 answers. And okay, good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kayaknya di semester sekarang teman-teman udah bahas ya di kelas mungkin ya uh, mengenai language skills. Excellent. And yes, Nuno is still uh, is leading now. Okay, how about this one? What does L1 stand for? What does L1 stand for in ELT? Okay, excellent. Yes, it is indeed the mother tongue. Jadi mereka ketika training atau ada sharing session dengan sesama guru itu, kita jarang bilang bahasa Indonesia umpamanya atau mother tongue. Jadi yang sering kita sebutkan itu L1 gitu. So if you're not familiar with this kind of terms, again, It's going to be difficult. All right. Four more to go. What does reading to get detailed information refer to? of you is correct. So intensive reading, yeah, which is different from skimming and scanning. All right. Good job, Nuno. Three more questions to go. What is a speaking activity? Which one is uh, a specimen of a speaking activity? Okay, good, not bad. Plenty of you answered correctly. So, jadi kalau lagi ada sharing 
dengan teacher terus teacher-nya bilang uh, you should use a speaking activity ya, itu berarti this kind of activity that they are you know talking about all right two more to go guys okay this one is about learning style Yes, wow. Well done. Yeah, this is a pretty advanced term. So good, good one. Okay, no, no. Okay, number nine. Okay, this one is an interesting one. This me this method was originally from the late 19th and early 20th century. What 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 is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You are not there yet. You haven't got this subject for the most of you, I'm sure. Jadi, in one of your subjects, I hope you will learn about the teaching methodologies. Okay, dan salah satu yang sangat terkenal itu grammar translation. Yeah, yang yeah, which is you know, a lot of debates are deriving from. Okay. Final one. What do you use uh, during a course to assess the learning of your students? And time's up. Okay, yes, progress test. Okay. Okay, that's it. And the winners of the TKT module one. Who is in the third position? We have Uya. Good job, Uya. Ika. And of course, number one, we have. Honorable mentions, Alia Pan. Okay, okay jadi intinya, teman -teman, uh those are the kinds of terms that are you know that you need to be familiar with if you would like to successfully join the international uh, elt uh, communities yeah or trainings or things like that because those are the terms that they will use so you need to make sure that by the time you are ready to get into the elt industry you are already familiar with familiar with this all right so final one the last agenda in our uh, sharing session today is some job seeking tips and tricks okay especially the ones that i uh, uh, that i uh, realized through my experience yang teman-teman mesti persiapkan untuk uh, secure a career opportunity in elt Industry is the first one you need to start building your portfolio. Portfolio artinya kreasi-kreasi teman-teman. Seperti contohnya kalau teman-teman ada pernah ada proyek umpamanya proyek ya membuat teaching object dalam bentuk powerpoint. Mungkin ada satu kelas nanti dapat tugas seperti itu. Nah itu disimpan. Jangan kemudian setelah didapat nilainya disimpan sembarang aja atau dihapus atau apa jangan save it keep it you'll need it oke okay. kumpul sebanyak mungkin contoh-contoh kreasi teman-teman sebagai seorang guru nah nanti ini akan dibutuhkan ketika umpamanya teman-teman mendaftar untuk menjadi guru kemudian ditanya bisa nggak ada contoh portfolio ngajarnya nah itu kan sudah enak kalau udah banyak Uh, dan banyak juga website yang membantu ini seperti contohnya slide share ya. saya setiap habis bikin powerpoint saya upload ke slide share nah itu jadi tempat penyimpanan saya kalau kalau nanti ada yang minta atau dibutuhkan lagi gitu kan so save your portfolio 
uh, terutama lagi yang bersifat teaching video. Itu yang menjadi tren sekarang. Setelah kalian interview, si sekolahnya akan meminta teaching video. Ada nggak contoh teaching videonya kamu yang kami bisa nonton? Jadi sebelum diminta, siapkan Oke, teaching video dan siapkan yang yang terbaik menurut teman-teman. Kemudian certifications. Usahakan teman-teman mendapatkan sertifikasi sebanyak mungkin. Semakin sifatnya internasional semakin baik. Contohnya TKT seperti tadi itu. Kalau ada resources, kalau teman-teman ada waktu, ada resource, ambil tesnya. Pas usahakan nilainya bagus. Itu diterima di hampir semua sekolah-sekolah internasional. Dan tentu saja sertifikat pelatihan, sertifikat seminar itu just you know get as much as many as possible as you can. Kemudian persiapkan juga job hunting profile seperti di LinkedIn itu usahakan profilnya udah enak buat job hunting di Upwork juga ya Upwork itu freelance website itu untuk mencari kelas-kelas private. Gitu. Dan banyak lagi website-website seperti itu di Google saja. Oke, okay, and then cover letter untuk melamar kerja, service ads untuk uh, iklan mencari siswa private itu juga dipersiapkan. Kemudian kalau udah dipanggil untuk interview, persiapkan interviewnya dengan baik. Oke, okay, I'll give you some tips later. Kemudian uh, micro teaching ini contoh mengajar, ya. disuruh demonstrasi. Uh, maksudnya demo teaching demo ya bagaimana cara ngajarnya kemudian is uh, seizing opportunities nah untuk portfolio dan certifications ini yang bisa kalian persiapkan jadi lesson plan-nya disimpan video teaching materi-materi supplementary ketika ngajar PPT-nya itu disimpan uh, kemudian certifications ya seperti yang saya bilang join seminar-seminar Uh, ambil kursus-kursus tambahan kalau ada, kemudian ambil international certifications kayak TKT, nah, kalau ada uh, awards atau honors lebih bagus lagi. Nah ini beberapa website yang uh, yang teman-teman bisa buat job hunting ya di ELT industry, LinkedIn, Teachaway, Job Street, Indeed. Tefl.com, Dave's ESL Coffee, Upwork, Freelancer.com, and many more, I'm sure. Uh, just search them. Cover letter, ya, tentu saja perlu disiapkan dengan baik. Kemudian service ads, ya. Nah, untuk interview posisi uh, ELT teacher, umpamanya, uh, you need first to do your homework. Pelajari sekolah yang akan kalian, uh, you know, interview with. Oke, okay. pelajari kurikulumnya. Mereka pakai apa bukunya? Mereka ada berapa level? Uh, mereka sistem naik levelnya seperti apa? Gitu kan? Study the curriculum. And then biasanya ini sudah ada di website-website sekolah tersebut. Kemudian penting juga kalian tahu teaching stylenya mereka seperti apa? Apakah mereka ambil grammar translation? Apakah PPP? Uh, presentation practice production, apakah communicative language teaching itu cari tahu mereka teaching stylenya seperti apa. Ini bisa kita cari tahu dari guru yang ngajar di sekolah tersebut atau mantan guru di situ. Uh, kemudian produk-produk educationnya apa? Apakah mereka juga memberikan TOEFL atau IELTS dan segala macam? Vision mission, nah tentu saja salarynya juga penting buat diketahui. Jadi teman-teman. Ketika ditanya, how much do you want? Well, you can have a uninformed uh, range yeah, of pay. Kemudian dress in teacherly manner. Usahakan sopan. Be ready to flaunt your English. Uh, show off your English. Ketika interview untuk uh, posisi uh, teacher, contohnya teman-teman harus jangan malu-malu dengan bahasa Inggris. You have to show it off. Pakai kata-kata yang memang sudah level C2 ketika interview. Anticipate both pedagogical and personality-related questions. Di interview, 
sebagai guru bahasa Inggris selalu menanyakan mengenai bagaimana teman-teman akan menghandle sebuah kelas. Kalau dapat siswa yang seperti ini, apa yang kamu lakukan? Kalau kondisi seperti ini di kelas, apa treatmentnya Anda gitu kan? Kemudian personality juga kadang ditanyakan. Nah, ketika adik-adik telah lolos di interview, akan dipanggil biasanya untuk micro teaching. Micro teaching itu atau teaching demo, kalian disuruh ngajar. Nah, kalau eh, sekarang yang mulai tren juga, kita tidak disuruh ngajar, tapi kita disuruh ngasih teaching video. Itulah makanya mesti disimpan teaching videonya. Supaya bisa digunakan untuk eh, apa eh, job hunting. Nah, tapi kalau teman-teman disuruh datang kemudian memberikan contoh mengajar, ini beberapa tips ya. Pertama, kalau dibebaskan memilih pelajaran yang akan disampaikan, pilih yang paling teman-teman paling uh, yang paling gampang, paling enak, paling comfort untuk di deliver. Kemudian uh, cari tahu teaching style di sekolah tersebut apa dan gunakan teaching style tersebut ketika micro teaching. Latihan minta pendapat teman yang agak berpengalaman bagaimana, apa yang mesti ditingkatkan dan tentu saja give your best nah, setelah kalian mendapatkan pekerjaannya, menjadi guru di sekolah tersebut ini beberapa tips untuk membuat karir Anda di sebuah sekolah itu melejitnya pertama, be proaktif setiap ada kesempatan apa opportunity siapa yang bisa bantu ini ambil take it they will notice all right they will notice and then show initiative kalau lihat sebuah masalah inisiatif kasih solusi untuk me, uh, apa, uh, to solve that problem be collaborative sering-sering uh, apa uh, teamwork bantu teman uh, sesama ini guru atau staff ya be reflective and adaptable and show your best and care so those are the tips now finally yang terakhir be committed kalau teman-teman berani menjadi guru maka teman-teman harus berani juga terus belajar all right and that would be all thank you Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aldian Shah. It's very, it's very nice uh, presentation and nice tips. I noted some of the uh, uh, your presentation um, to be uh, a successful ELT professional. So uh, the first, you have to get good at English. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, improve your skills, and you know. Um, <clears throat> your personalities and uh, you know you have to improve the opportunities also uh, use social media LinkedIn um, you know uh, good connection yep. uh, good career requires good connection absolutely I couldn't agree more to that <laughs> yeah it's a uh, very nice and also uh, improve your teaching knowledge yes yep. uh, teaching skills teaching knowledge and also um, Yeah, do mini research to the uh, uh, institution mm -hmm. that you are applying for. Yep. It's a very nice presentation. Um, now I um, <clears throat> I start the session for uh, questions. Okay, if participants have questions for Mr. Aldian Shah, um, um, they can add them in the uh, chat, and mm -hmm. Mr. Aldian Shah will be able to answer. Uh, some of them during this Q and A session, maybe yes, yes. Pak Ling, they have a question. I, I actually I have a, a question for Mr. Aldiansha. Yes, yeah, please go ahead, Pak Ling. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, Mr. Aldiansha. So, but this is um, a very, um, you know, very uh, popular right now. Startup, you know, startup. Yes, startup. Like one guru, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you are now you are involved in the uh, educational industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so education has become uh, an industry here. So do yeah. you think um, 
um, all how effective I mean how, how effective uh, using uh, startup or using application mm-hmm. in, in teaching uh, compared to uh, you know a website website or application in in mm-hmm. online context okay in the context of online uh, teaching mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which one is more effective you mm-hmm. think uh, by application or, or live online yes, or live yeah or live ah okay uh i think both have their own like uh you know benefits and uh what is it upsides yeah like the application which is the what what's the fancy term asynchronous yeah the asynchronous learning yes is very suitable for self study right mm-hmm very suitable for self-study so the application and those pre-made lessons they are very good for self-study learning but not so effective for um like practice uh, what is it what's the term yeah for synchronous then the other one which is the live class like what we're having in english academy jadi di english academy itu kita memang kelasnya itu live meskipun online tapi live dan kelebihannya dibanding belajar mandiri dengan aplikasi ya uh, lebih interaktif dan uh, lebih personalized ya seperti itu nah, tapi kalau self study self study kelebihannya juga lebih fleksibel uh, pembelajaran yeah. jadi bisa siswa itu bisa mengakses pelajarannya kapan saja di mana saja gitu bedanya ya kurang interaktif dan tidak ada ya uh, guru ya no teacher's role there to help directly when the students are uh, facing uh, unique uh, problems oh, this is it this is the uh, uh, what is the most important subject mm-hmm. in the uh, uh, during the lecture okay during uh, college in in the college to support your capability uh, as an ELT professional good question I would say uh, bahasa Inggris, you know the writing, speaking, listening, and reading. Yeah. I remember Pak pa, pa Ling uh, taught me the reading one. <laughs> I still remember the final test, which where he asked us to read a text using proper, uh, you know, pronunciation. I think, I think it was in speaking, but yes, re, uh, the bahasa Inggris, and then the teaching methodology. They were very helpful. Those two. Okay, speaking and teaching. Okay, thank you. Is there any yep. question from the students, from the participants, or maybe from Paling? Yeah. Go ahead, guys. Jangan malu-malu. Kalau ada mau ditanyakan, silakan. I let the students go first. Buya, Buya, perhaps. Uh, Buya has raised his hand. Okay, Buya, silakan. Hey, I think he's muted. Buya masih mute. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear you fine. Go ahead, Buya. Okay. Um, actually, uh, there have been several offers to teach privately and teach at a private school. The offer mm-hmm. come from my teacher, but the big problem is the I still don't don't believe don't believe with myself and I always feel that my English is so bad so uh, maybe you can give me the the solution or or something uh-huh. like that uh-huh. uh, okay so the solution of how to be more confident with our English is that what you're what you're asking about Absolutely. Yeah. okay the solution uh okay uh first speaking about improving your english and getting to the level of i don't know perfect you'll never you'll never achieve that kalau menurut saya belajar bahasa inggris itu tidak bakalan pernah perfect yeah we will we will we will always have english that is what is it that is not perfect you know I, and in fact, I, I personally, saya secara pribadi sudah berhenti untuk mengejar perfection dalam bahasa Inggris. I used to have that goal, but 
not anymore karena saya sudah sadari kalau bahasa Inggris itu ya it's never gonna be perfect akan ada vocabulary yang kita tidak tahu akan ada grammar yang kita mungkin salah jadi don't worry too much on that In, instead fokus uh, buya fokus di mana bahasa Inggrisnya itu bisa connect dengan orang gitu you can convey your message well to the others nah kalau buya udah bisa uh, merasa kalau bahasa Inggrisnya sudah apa bagus di 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 mengerti orang lain itu buya mesti you have to be proud of yourself because that means you're you're successful in communicating and that's what language is for right to communicate jadi buya untuk merasa lebih confident itu aja targetnya berkomunikasi dengan efektif oke okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I think also, uh, Mr. Aldian, I think uh, the problem that our uh, potential ELT professionals now have is uh, the confidence, the creativity, you know, and mm -hmm. the, uh, the courage to start, you know, the yeah. courage to start the career in ELT professionals. You know, most mm -hmm. of them Uh, most of the graduates uh, choose to become. Uh, well, I think Pak Ling uh, has this data, like uh, what you know, what our students want, what our alumni what want, the, uh, want to become. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. After I, I remember conducting graduating. Uh, mini research, yeah, on yeah, research. our uh, freshmen. Uh, had in mind once they graduate uh, from the English language education program. And what would it be? It is, I, I can't remember the detail, but I think the, the opinions uh, split into two main groups. Uh -huh. Those who want to become teachers and those who want to do other things. Okay. Um, To be honest, I can't remember the the percentage, uh, uh -huh. but but um, it is surprising to find that many of our freshmen did not have English language teaching in their minds. They they want to do something else. Well, that's <laughs> but I can understand it because I was in the same boat as well when I was uh, first enrolled. Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to be a teacher. Yeah, I wanted to just uh, go abroad and see the world. Yeah. And, Ooh, nice. and I uh, enrolled in the English department just because my father wanted me to, to be there. Yeah, I see. It was not my choice, my personal choice. I wanted to do something else. But later on, I, I found my passion in teaching and that developed ironically uh, when I graduated, <laughs> when, I was, when I was already on the job. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, it, did, it was not something uh, that uh, uh, grew during my uh, studies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it developed uh, ironically, as I said, uh, after I have graduated. So yes. I can understand if many of our yeah. students don't want to be teachers. Uh, it's a, it's a, uh, what is it? It's a, like a never-ending. <laughs> process yeah for yeah some. yeah yeah i totally agree yeah. and it's actually good paling because i mean yeah i mean you need to you know broaden your horizon do not only you don't do not only stick to only one end goal you know there are lots of opportunities especially nowadays in this modern age so you can be any anything as long as what you get in your study can help you uh, reach that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, any any other questions from the others? Yeah. Go ahead, guys. Uh, uh, there's one question there from pa Santida. Oh, Santida, from Santida. Yeah. I used to apply for English teaching career in Middle East and I was accepted, but unfortunately the salary shown to me was lower <laughs> than a native speaker. Yeah. Who, yes. yeah, do not have a teaching certificate. What do you uh -huh, think about uh -huh. that attitude? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Pa Santida, this kind of I don't know even how to put it, but yeah, this kind of, you know, 
nest versus and nest uh, is still is still uh, ongoing uh, in the you know in the so-called industry, and I think. Uh, as as a as a non native English speaking professional, uh, yeah, what in in my personal view, what we can do is to help the management uh, realize that being a native speaker is you know not not necessarily being better, you know, uh, and 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 to show that. In the class, we can we can be as good as them or even better than them. That's what I personally do, Pak Samtidar, in 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 you know response to this kind of uh, nest versus non nest issue. But yeah, it's always there, Pak. Even in in the English Academy, even at the institution where I'm working now, right you now. You probably have to explain that, uh, Mr. Aldi, the uh, nest and 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 nest, yeah. Oh yeah, Nest. Uh, yeah. yeah. So for 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 adik adik, uh, Nest itu native English speaking teacher and and Nest itu non native English speaking teacher. And yes, ini salah satu hal yang sudah lama ya menjadi apa ya istilahnya menjadi perdebatan mengapa native English speaker teacher speaking teacher itu lebih dimanja, lebih banyak opportunity, lebih tinggi payrollnya kebanding yang non native sementara jadi native speaker is not a guarantee that you are a better teacher. Bahkan in fact, yang sering saya temukan loh ya, student itu lebih request yang non native. Itu yang menjadi ironinya. Ya, tapi tentu saja yang yang menjadi penentu kebijakan ya manajemen ya karena terutama ya sekolah non formal ada investor segala macam dan mereka perspektif mereka yang yang cenderung diikuti gitu kan dan memang perspektif pada umumnya kan orang pikir non -native, native speaker itu lebih baik karena ya bahasa asli mereka gitu. Nah kita sebagai ELT professionals ini kedepannya mesti bantu masyarakat society investor tersebut itu sadar kalau bukan hanya itu yang menjadi penentu di, uh, sebagai seorang ELT professional yeah. dan fight for it together right? Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Perlu edukasi memang tentang yeah. uh, keunggulan non native dibanding yeah. native. Ya, yeah, right. kan lebih paham lebih paham uh, di English learning in our, uh, of our students here in uh -huh. India itu kan biasanya yang non native ya. Yeah. Yeah, betul pak. Karena betul. we have been there, right? We have been. <laughs> yeah. Sir, in, in worst cases, you know. Uh, blue eyes and blonde hair uh -huh. are considered native speak in, yeah. in, in 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 some circumstances you know uh -huh. you're not even native uh -huh. speaker of english but it's just uh, the appearance that's right <laughs> yeah I, 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 I used to have that experience uh when i was working uh -huh. for ef english first uh -huh. uh, in uh, my first when I when I first came back from Australia after completing my masters, I was the only non-native among native teachers. So I uh -huh, uh -huh. can imagine how it felt like to be <laughs> to be uh, treated differently, to be paid differently. Yes, but, uh, but to, right. to have to do things in the same way. I mean, all the requirements are the same. You have to do the same things, but you are uh, paid differently. But I had yeah. to. I have. I had signed the contract, so I had to do it. Yeah, that's right. Still have question here. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, go ahead. Yeah, one of the students. One of the students asks um, about your the book. Okay. You nice. To read. Yeah, in order to improve your English. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, so once again, saya dulu nggak suka baca buku ya, uh, Afifa. Tapi karena saya baca banyak research mengatakan reading itu salah satu metode belajar bahasa terbaik ya. I I, I relate. <laughs> My input, yes. yeah. <laughs> Jadi uh, waktu itu saya bertanya, oke, okay, what kind of books will I be interested in? Jadi cari pilih buku yang menarik buat Afifa kalau memang mau pakai metode itu untuk belajar. Uh, 
Nah, saya kebetulan suka yang self help, self help book yang bersifat motivasi gitu. Uh, if you if you like that kind of genre, I would suggest the this title, the arts of not giving a, you know, f, <laughs> the arts of not giving an f. Look it up, it's a good read. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, I I just uh, googled the book. You know, I just googled it. Uh, if you're lucky, you get a website that. Share the book uh, freely. All right. Is there any other questions from the students? From Nisa Amalia Rahmadi. Have you ever have you ever taught young learners? No learners okay, yeah, yeah. EYL. What yeah, method yeah. Do you think would be best to teach young learners since teaching English is best to do at early uh -huh. ages, especially in the FL class? Okay, my question is: uh, Have you? Uh, have you been taught or have you got the subject discussing TPR or the teaching methodology TPR? So there is a teaching methodology called TPR, Total Physical Response is what it stands for. That's, in my opinion, the best, the best approach. And in Total Physical Response, you basically ask the students to move. You know, you relate the language learning with some kind of movement and interactions, like. For example, you're teaching verb ing or the present continuous. You sing a song use about present with present continuous sentences, and then you move following the song. That's an example of TPR. Okay. Hope that answered Nisa Amalia Rahmadi's question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Another question. You can post. Your question yeah. not yet. Uh, yeah, right the hand. Well, okay, go ahead. Uh, he's still muted, sir. Dina, Dina is still muted. Dina. Dina Camila. Dina Camila, please unmute your um, Zoom. Or you can write your your question in the chat box if you prefer. Blue. Oh, okay. Really? Dina, you can unmute yourself first. Can you unmute your mic? Oh, she, need, she needs permission, sir. She needs permission to? Yes. Uh, to, to do what? <laughs> to, to, to say something? <laughs> <laughs> ah okay i have lowered her hand so maybe that's that's the the way to go dina okay go ahead dina uh dina why don't you just type your question yeah Good idea. And while you do that, we can uh, answer some of these questions in the chat box. Yes, from Fatur Rahman. Okay. Oh, sorry, from Ahmad Muhlisin. Yeah. Uh, Ahmad. Yeah, he's one of my uh, colleagues. Uh, I in see. Of course, so, Mr. Aldi, I'm still a bit difficult to handle more than 50 students in an online class. Uh -huh. As you experience how to manage them in interactive way for teaching grammar and speaking, is that possible to avoid them leaving meeting room in Zoom? Okay. All Thank right. you. Yeah. Okay. Nice question, uh, Pak Ahmad. So, um, 
yeah that's the challenge with online teaching because the interactivity you know it's 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 a lot easier to build interactivity in an offline class than than in online but i would suggest to use the you know the 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 the, the websites like kahoot like the one i used earlier that can really help in building interactivity and keep the students engaged with us so when i teach online i usually i don't use powerpoint i use kahoot as my slides so it's a quiz but it is but it's actually my presentation there and and i believe there are more you know uh, other uh you know tools like that that are going to be available now that online learning is becoming more and more prevalent right so my suggestion pa is to use that kind of tool okay use that kind of tool to engage to keep the students engaged and also the breakout rooms so the breakout rooms if you use zoom and, and even if you use google meet i think they have that feature as well it's really helpful to you know for group work and put them in in small groups get them get each of them a role so that they will feel like they you know they 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 play a role in the group work and that will make them stay and that will make them feel you know important for their group and hopefully uh, it will keep them uh, engaged and therefore make the learning uh, effective okay and then from fatur what is the hardest parts of uh your okay and what is your solution to overcome the problems uh the hardest part is managing multi-level uh, or mixed ability class mixed ability class means a class where there are very smart students and there are very weak students that's the the, the most challenging one because you will need to do the extra uh, effort which is to design your lesson plan so that you can accommodate the smart one without neglecting the weak ones and this can be very what's the word <laughs> laborious yeah it can take a lot of time to plan that kind of lesson because you have to have extra you know extra extra things extra exercise for students who finish fast uh, uh, simpler exercise for weaker students so that's that's my solution and i hope that helps and from nurhaira i've noticed from the... okay 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 good good question so to be able to adapt well nurhaira i would say uh, ask for ask for the insights or hindsight from your more senior fellow worker that's what i always do when i join a new new school i will approach one of the senior teachers and i will you know buy them a coffee <laughs> and ask them so what should i do <laughs> to survive here you know something like that. they 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 always have insights to help us adapt faster Okay. Is there anything else? Any other question? Okay. Excuse me, Paling. Is this uh, the end of uh, our uh, Q and A session? I think maybe, there's, maybe, there's yeah. one one question. One last uh, question. question. Yeah, we can close it with uh, UDS question, I think. Yeah, right. UDS question. Would be a fun. Okay, good students born from good teachers. What do you think the problems of EFL teachers? Ah, uh, special from good teachers. Okay. That's, that's interesting and pretty challenging to, to, to answer. Enthusiasm in this question. Uh, case is similar to motivation i i believe right okay so how do you build the motivation to learn for students especially those who are in rural uh, rural areas 
Okay. Um, I would say you need, we need to show them, show your students the opportunities that they can get through their study and through, you know, becoming an English teacher for this case. And secondly is to give them solutions for the, um, for their situation. And in this case, the lack of facilities, right, in rural areas. So the solution could be, you can give them like, um, like a link of books that they can download when they, when they are in town or when they get a good connection, they can download those books and they can access them offline when they are back in their uh, rural, rural area. Uh, that's one of the things that we can do uh, as a teacher to help, to help our students. And keep thinking of other strategies. It's a matter of just, uh, the more you think, I'm sure the better the, uh, the, 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 the solution will be that you can offer to your students. Okay, um, let me answer Dina's question real quick before we wrap up. I graduated from one of your and now I'm in, okay for high school, but we know real about pedagogy. Okay, good. But when it comes to the guy, we do not have. Okay, so do you think? Um, Dina, I don't know about others, but for me personally, the pedagogical knowledge is crucial and it's indispensable. Knowing that. Children learn best when they are engaged, when they are, you know, moving, when they are creating something that really helps in my lesson planning. Instead of explaining things to them that will probably, you know, bore them and will be useless for them. So, so I think it's worth, it's a very worth learning and, and studying, you know those pedag pedag pedagogical knowledge and um, skills and nowadays we have the internet you know which can help us learn anything basically right so use the internet you know search more about this uh, pedagogical studies uh, you know research papers about it things like that and invest some time when you have the free time read it Prac apply it in your class experiment with it I'm sure you'll you'll benefit a lot from it. Okay, that's it. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Aliansha. Yes, my pleasure. Um, yeah, um, I noticed that there are a number of uh, important, interesting, interesting points uh, raised here uh, in becoming a competent ELT teacher. There are four dimensions of teacher competence. I noted that the pedagogical competence, the personality competence, the social competence, the professional competence, you know, those are very important uh, notes uh, in becoming an ELT professional. So before we close this uh, um, session, we, we need to hear a closing remark from uh, the head of English language program, Pak Haira Korompot. Time is yours, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Muhammad Miftah Fauzan. Wow, that's one great uh, talk yeah, from uh, a former student who is now uh, someone I can consider a colleague, yeah? colleague in, in the uh, effort to advance uh, the English language teaching studies as well as the English language teaching profession in our country. And I think we are very grateful uh, to have this chance to learn from Mr. Aldi and to inspire. Yeah, the most important thing is to inspire our young students, yeah, uh, young and aspiring teachers who are being trusted by their parents to be educated here in the English language education study program. And I, I don't know how to express my gratitude to Aldi, yeah. It Aldi, is my honor, uh, but it is my honor. Thank you. Um, I'm very proud to have Aldi back, yeah, uh, for, this, uh, for this talk. 
and I'm sure we have learned a lot, as I said. Um, so uh, from all this presentation, I can, I myself, I can learn, uh, I can confirm my understanding that uh, some English teachers are born, some English teachers are made, yeah? Uh, if you are born to be an English teacher, uh, an English teacher, uh, good luck, yeah? Make the most of it. And if you're a born to be an English teacher, but you are in the process of making yourself an English teacher or being made an English teacher, um, I think the English language education study program is one of the uh, good places for that. Yeah. So uh, our 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 job is to create future teachers, and. I, I envy Aldi, yeah? he's uh, having a holiday in Salayar while still doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what else can you ask for? <laughs> I mean, this is probably the best way of doing your job, uh, doing the job you love, yeah? doing the job you love while holidaying. Yeah? So uh, uh, I'm sure uh, some of, uh, many of our students are inspired by Maybe you can share your uh, social media. Um, uh, sure, yes, sure. Yes, in the chat box so everyone can visit you. Yeah, yeah. But, you, know, you know, become yeah, a fellow. Language but I don't, I don't, I don't really use the social media. I use it only for stalking. <laughs> <laughs> only for stalking the schools I'm going to apply for. Okay. All right. So yeah, unfortunately, but yeah, you can definitely find me on Facebook or uh, Instagram, guys. Just look for Aldi ah, okay so we we'll look forward to seeing your photographs yeah taken of <laughs> the beach there down there in Salaya okay enjoy it uh, Aldi and uh, have fun and before we go I would like to present to you in, uh, on behalf of the Prodi and all of us here in the English department um, <clears throat> this certificate yeah, Aldi, Mr. Aldi, is it visible now? Yes, but uh, yeah, it is. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will, I will send it to you. Uh, you you probably won't need this anymore. <laughs> no, but, no, of course not. But but uh, this is a token of appreciation from us here. Uh, this is the only thing we can uh, give you in return for uh, your work. Uh, service to the department it is my pleasure uh, it is my pleasure <laughs> yeah and we hope that we can uh, help create more uh, graduates uh, of your caliber uh, so that amen future we can invite them back and, and uh, say something to their uh, juniors yeah and to all of us of course so once again thank you very much uh, mr aldian shah Sarjana Sastra, Master of Arts, TESOL Applied Linguistics, for um, giving your speech here in the online pre semester Studium General entitled The World in Your Hands Being and Becoming an English Language Teaching Professional. All the best for your uh, current job and future career, and we hope, I mean, I mean, hope that you will be able to reach your uh, what is it? Ultimate ambition, and that is university <laughs> professor. <laughs> okay, <laughs> something, <laughs> something that I'm aiming, uh, I'm aiming for uh, myself. Yeah. Okay, but all thank right. You. Thank you okay. once again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, I would like to convey a special thanks to our keynote speaker today, Mr. Aldian Shah, the English department and English language program and faculty of languages and literature that have been extremely cooperative in staying with us during the time allocated so finally guys uh, my deepest thanks are of course reserved for the participants for their priceless contributions and for this event thank you very much see you next time in our next event uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning yeah bye bye Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in the classes next week. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Yes, sir. Thank you for the insight, sir. It was very useful for us. Yeah, pleasure. The pleasure is mine and pleasure is ours. Okay, bye everyone. I will have to uh, stop the recording and also end the session. Thank you for joining us.